Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I don't know exactly when you decided to join us, but I thank you for the fact that you decided to do so. My name is Sandra Torres. I'm a professor of sociology and hold a chair in social gerontology at Uppsala University in Sweden. I'm addressing you from my home library since the pandemic is still lurking in the back. We're supposed to be putting together a video in order to give you insight into how the book idea came about, but also how the book is structured. And we thought that I will commence by giving you insight into the actual book idea. So back in 2018, people who have a background in social work education were meeting as part of the European Conference of Social Work Research that meets annually. As part of that organization, there is a special interest groups entitled the European Network for Gerontological Social Work. And we often meet the day before the conference begins. As we were sitting around the table, many of us from all over Europe, we were discussing some of the challenges of gerontological social work education. And the fact that although there are books out there on social work with older people, it was really not a book that introduced social work scholars, professionals, educators, and practitioners to the actual lens that is critical gerontology. So the book is doing just that. It is also a call to arms to the social work profession to think of the important role they play in the caring democracies that cater to older people. And we wanted them to feel empowered and to use the toolbox that is critical gerontology to think more creatively about the work they can do and the enormous role that they could potentially play. So that is what the book is about in a nutshell. I'll hand it over now to Sarah Donnelly, my co-editor. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra, and hello to all of you who've tuned in. My name is Sarah Donnelly, and I'm an assistant professor of social work in University College Dublin. As a critical gerontologist and also registered social work practitioner, I have experience of not only frontline social work practice with older people, but also in carrying out research and topics that impact on the care that older people receive, such as home care provision, care planning, capacity and decision making, and adult safeguarding. However, within that, I'm also acutely aware from both my own time as a frontline practitioner, but also from the many conversations that I have with my frontline colleagues about the ongoing frustrations that social work practitioners feel in relation to often their perceived powerlessness in relation to how macro level policies impact on our social work with older people at the micro level. Um, Sandra gave you some really useful insights into what inspired us to write this edited collection, but also what we're hoping to accomplish by it. In the introduction to the book, which is made up of 12 chapters, we argue that some of the key concepts in critical gerontology, such as agency, autonomy, diversity, social justice, inclusion and equality, offer us a gaze that's particularly appropriate if we want to play a decisive role, not only in empowering practitioners to question expectations about their practice, but in effectively influencing social policy change. The authors of the different chapters in our book very much urge gerontological social workers to start to appropriate other professional identities besides the street level bureaucrat one and to team up with scholars of critical gerontology who focus on social work practice in order to carve out an activist led space in order to collectively advocate and combat, combat societal and institutional ageism. Critical Gerontology for Social Workers, therefore, is a book that urges social work practitioners and educators to reimagine what social work with older people could be about. Social workers who focus on other age groups or vulnerable groups tend to take their activist and advocacy roles seriously and therefore have been able to affect enormous change within their practice. But we need gerontological social workers to become similarly empowered. And again, this book really uh, I suppose acts as a call to arms in this respect for the social work profession. We believe therefore that this book is both timely and an important space for practitioners, scholars and educators to really consider and reflect on the challenges, possibilities and spaces that gerontological social work might have or be able to create in order to develop gerontological social work and make meaningful changes to the lives of the older people that we work with not only now, but also in the future.